The Gulf of Mexico slash the Gulf of America is a geologic wonder. In the context of its oil producing wells slash its natural gas producing wells, the geologic setting that allows this region to be so rich is an area of immense study. And when you go further into understanding it, it presents you with a degree of insight into why this region is so wealthy and in some regard, so envied. With Jamaica having an increasing interest in the area of Jamaica's oil exploration, I would like to use this video as a means of helping the layman have a greater understanding of the geologic factors that are very important towards positioning Jamaica as a producer of hydrocarbons, oil, and natural gas. Take a look at this Google satellite imagery. Primarily focus on the area Gulf of Mexico, bracket Gulf of America. What it is that I want you to take into consideration is that what you can see is a light blue area, darker blue area within the Gulf of Mexico. The light blue area you can consider it as shallow waters or shallow seas. The dark blue area you can consider it as being deeper water or deeper seas. The deeper blue area of the Gulf of Mexico is considered as a basin. What you know should also take into consideration is that this basin area is the sink where you have sediment as well as water from land or the continental area deposited within this basin. So over geologic time, sediment on top of sediment compact, and this basically presents a source for the hydrocarbons to be developed over geologic time. What you're looking at here is a vertical stratigraphy column of a section of the Gulf of Mexico, specifically a northwestern section of the Gulf of Mexico. What it is that you can identify or what you should be able to identify is that there are different layers of rock at the bottom is the oldest rock, basement rock, and that's considered as igneous rock. You have layers of carbonate, layers of salt, and there are also layers of sandstone shales. Now, this over geologic time is what sets the stage for hydrocarbons to be formed, to be stored, and then basically to be trapped. Consider the salt areas as zones that can trap the hydrocarbons. The source rocks can be both carbonates as well as sandstone shales. In the context of the overall location of the Gulf of Mexico, it is considered as a passive margin, meaning that it does not experience as much tectonic activity or earthquake activity relative to an active margin such as where two plates meet um, as an example a subduction zone so with that being said it, it's a it's a very stable area that allows for the hydrocarbons to remain sealed and ready pretty much to be penetrated and extracted Look at this Google satellite imagery of Jamaica and Jamaica's waters. What you should be able to now see is that there exist light blue areas and there exist darker blue areas. Similar to the Gulf of Mexico, Google satellite imagery, light blue areas you can consider it as being relatively shallower seas. The darker blue areas, relatively deeper seas. Similarly to that, the relatively lighter blue areas, you can consider it as being carbonate areas um, or raised carbonate platforms. Uh, in that context, from that point of view, considering that the Gulf of Mexico has similar 
raised carbonate platforms and these zones are zones of oil producing wells, you more than likely will be thinking that, okay, yes, this pretty much gives indication that Jamaica should have uh, oil in commercial quantities. Yes and no, because one of the other critical factors of Jamaica's location is that Jamaica is located very close to the uh, interplate boundary of the Caribbean plate and that of the North American plate. So in essence, this presents the issue of Jamaica being more so closer to an active plate margin. Remember that the Gulf of Mexico is located primarily in what is considered as a passive plate margin. So tectonic activity in the Gulf of Mexico over you know, time is not as, as, as great or frequent relative to Jamaica. And in the context of earthquakes in this scheme, earthquakes pretty much can be considered as a factor or a factor that can break seals and as such result in seepage of hydrocarbons, whether it be in the form of gas and or liquid, you know, oil as an example. Having said this, a great potential is still there for Jamaica in my view. Looking at this region on the offshore in Jamaica's waters and doing some cross-referencing between what it is that the literature, geologic literature, is highlighting of the Gulf of Mexico and what we know thus far as it pertains to geologic research on Jamaica's mainland primarily. There is a great potential for Jamaica to have the oil being trapped, specifically within the area such as the Pedro Bank region as an example, um, and even the, 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 the zones that pretty much have already been licensed for further exploration. As I've highlighted, because there exists a lack of research in these zones from a standpoint of doing that kind of core sediment analysis, as you would have seen me mention, is actually the case in the Gulf of Mexico. We cannot fully have a greater picture as it pertains to the geologic setting of Jamaica's offshore. That is very critical, and obviously that takes money. But nonetheless, there is that great potential 